This is section 66 of Mark Twain's Speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Mistaken Identity by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Address at the annual Ladies' Day, Papyrus Club, Boston. Ladies and gentlemen, I am perfectly astonished. A S T O N I s h e d ladies and gentlemen astonished at the way history repeats itself i find myself situated at this moment exactly and precisely as i was once before years ago to a jot to a tittle to a very hair there isn't a shade of difference it is the most astonishing coincidence that ever but wait I will tell you the former instance, and then you will see it for yourself. Years ago I arrived one day at Salamanca, New York, eastward bound. Must change cars there and take the sleeper train. There were crowds of people there, and they were swarming into the long sleeper train and packing it full, and it was a perfect purgatory of dust and confusion and gritting of teeth and soft, sweet, and low profanity. I asked the young man in the ticket office if I could have a sleeping section, and he answered no, with a snarl that shriveled me up like burned leather. I went off, smarting under this insult to my dignity, and asked another local official, supplicatingly, if I couldn't have some poor little corner somewhere in a sleeping car, but he cut me short with a venomous no you can't every corner is full now don't bother me any more and he turned his back and walked off my dignity was in a state now which cannot be described i was so ruffled that well i said to my companion if these people knew who i am they but my companion cut me short there don't talk such folly he said if they did know who you are do you suppose it would help your high mightiness to a vacancy in a train which has no vacancies in it? This did not improve my condition any to speak of, but just then I observed that the colored porter of a sleeping car had his eye on me. I saw his dark countenance light up. He whispered to the uniformed conductor, punctuating with nods and jerks toward me, and straightway this conductor came forward, oozing politeness from every pore. "'Can I be of any service to you?' he asked. "'Will you have a place in the sleeper?' "'Yes,' I said, "'and much oblige me, too. "'Give me anything, anything will answer.' "'We have nothing left but the big family stateroom,' he continued, "'with two berths and a couple of armchairs in it, but it is entirely at your disposal. Here, Tom, take these satchels aboard. Then he touched his hat, and we and the colored Tom moved along. I was bursting to drop just one little remark to my companion, but I held in and waited. Tom made us comfortable in that sumptuous great apartment, and then said, with many bows and a perfect affluence of smiles, now is there anything you want sir in case you can have just anything you want I, it don't make no difference what it is can i have some hot water and a tumbler at nine tonight blazing hot i asked you know about the right temperature for a hot scotch punch yes sir that you can you can pan on it i'll get it myself good now that lamp is hung too high. Can I have a big coach candle fixed up just at the head of my bed so that I can read comfortably? Yes, sir, you can. I'll fix her up myself, and I'll fix her so she'll burn all night. Yes, sir, and you can just call for anything you want, and this year whole train'll be turned wrong end up and inside out for to get it for you. That's so. And he disappeared. Well, I tilted my head back, hooked my thumbs in my armholes, smiled a smile on my companion, and said gently, 
Well, what do you say now? My companion was not in the humor to respond, and didn't. The next moment that smiling black face was thrust in at the crack of the door, and this speech followed. Laws, bless you, sir, I knowed you in a minute. I told the conductor so. Laws, I knowed you the minute I set eyes on you. Is that so, my boy? Handing him a quadruple fee. Who am I? General McClellan. And he disappeared again. My companion said, vinegarishly, Well, well, what do you say now? Right there comes in the marvelous coincidence I mentioned a while ago, viz. I was speechless. And that is my condition now. Perceive it? End of Mistaken Identity by Mark Twain Read by John Greenman